Hey guys, welcome back to yet a new video. Today, it is not a technical video. It's more of a, you know, chat video, vloggish video. And today I want to talk about the web. So, the web's changed a lot in the last couple of years, um, especially in the last few years. And that relates a lot to web development. And I want to talk more specifically about the state of full stack web development in 2020 and what can we expect for the couple of next years. Web development is much different today than it was five or six years ago. If you compare it to when I started working, uh, actually working with programming uh, 2015, it is much different. Uh, we didn't have Vue back then. Um, AngularJS was still widely used and with widely, I mean within the amount of people that used a JavaScript front-end framework. Um, Go wasn't that popular, Node wasn't that big. I don't think we, no, we had Elixir, but it wasn't big at all. So things changed a lot. If you compare it to today, where you have hundreds, thousands of options to choose from, from JS frameworks to backend frameworks, uh, to backend JS frameworks, to deployment tools and all of that, even where you host your code, you have GitLab, you have GitHub, you have Bitbucket. Um, so it's changed a lot. And I think that on the good side, it gives the developer uh, a huge amount of options to choose from. So if you don't particularly like React, you can choose Vue. If you don't like Vue, you can check out um, Angular. And if you like PHP, you have Laravel. If you like Ruby, you have Rails. If you don't like Rails, you have Sinatra. And, you know, it goes on. So I think it's great on that side. But I think that developers are becoming overwhelmed with technology. So if you go back to 2015, all you, have, you needed to, look, to know to be a full stack developer, to, you know, get work with it, to get work done, to get hired and all of that was basically a popular backend framework, uh, a little bit of jQuery and a little bit of CSS. You, need to, you needed to know a little bit of Bootstrap maybe. Um, I know that, I, I, don't, I don't even know what was used back then. Uh, Materialize, CSS, what else? I th I, I'm not sure if Boma existed already, but you didn't have as many options as you have today. Um, you, you, you had a small, you know, a small box to choose things from and you were kind of always covered so you kind of always knew everything that you needed to know but as you know UIs became more and more complex especially with mobile um, you started to have to learn a JS front-end framework like angular JS or react or Vue, which came a little bit later you already had a few libraries um, back then uh, I just can't remember now, but um, we had Ember. There were a few other uh, others that I can't quite remember now, but uh, they weren't as widely used as they are right now. Um, so it was much simpler back then. And I'm not saying that you cannot be a full stack developer knowing, I don't know, just PHP, some vanilla CSS, and jQuery. You can, you definitely can. But what the market demands right now is a little bit more so if you want to know that sure you can build your stuff but it's going to get harder it's going to get to be really hard to get a job with that and you're just not kind of following the market you know uh you're not up to date with technologies which i don't think is completely necessary but uh, i do think that to a certain extent it is good to be anyway today it feels it's not that it's harder to be a full stack developer because you have so much content out there I push a lot of content. Um, if you there's several YouTube channels that also push a lot of free content, so it's easier to get information. But I do think that now you have a overwhelming amount of technology. So if you want to, you know, deploy an app, let's let's use what I'm familiar with, what I work with the most, and that is Laravel. If you want to kind of develop an app that falls into today's you know guidelines 
you would need to use Laravel, uh, a front-end framework, React, or Vue, a CSF framework like Bootstrap or Tailwind. Um, so then you also have to learn either Redux or Vuex to, to, to handle state management, which I don't think is necessary as well, but that's what people usually learn. Then you need to know a little bit of Webpack to get your assets compiled. Then you need to know, you know, Amazon S3 to, to store your files. Then you also need to know uh, EC2 and, and handling droplets in DigitalOcean or whatever you use. So before, you know, if you go back to 2010, it was basically having a bunch of PHP files and, you know, getting them into an FTP server and that was it. Um, so, of course, in big companies, you have much more folks, teams, you have a front end team, you have a back end team, you have someone that handles deployment and all of that. But in most situations on small teams, you don't. You usually, basically everyone usually needs to know everything, even if they're not an expert. Uh, so the front end developer needs to know a little bit of back end and a little bit of DevOps and all of that. And sometimes a single person does all of that. So. They do front end, back end, deployment, all of that. So, yeah, I feel we have too many tools today. And as I said, I don't think it's bad per se, but I, I do think that it's not exactly needed. It adds some complexity. And what I've been seeing is so you had, you know, low complexity. Then you started generating the complexity, uh, complexity with frameworks and tools and all of that. Uh, so, I mean, sometimes you need to, to, let's use Node for instance, sometimes you need to install, you know, four or five dependencies, everything is a little small package. And so that complexity increased, and what I feel is that it is now going down, especially on Laravel, my, you know, the ecosystem I am the most familiar with. So right now, you have several um, boilerplates provided by Laravel or by the community. You have the recently just launched Laravel Jetstream. Um, you have Laravel Nova that handles the admin side. Uh, you have Laravel Mix, which uh, handles compiling assets. So you don't have to know, I don't know Webpack at all. I just use Laravel Mix. And when I need to use to some, it at some place else, I usually just, you know, go to the documentation of the whatever I'm using, let's say Tailwind, and just copy a few examples, but I'm not an expert on Webpack. I, to be honest, I don't really know how it works. So, yeah. And then, you know, um, you have two things that I really like. One of them is Nurture.js. Um, when you use a framework, or let's call it a library, like Vue.js and uh, you want to build an SPA, a single page application, you need to use uh, the Vue router, which adds a little bit more complexity. So you have your backend router, well, let's say Laravel in that case, or Rails router, whatever. And then you have the frontend router. And uh, Inertia does something really cool. And that is, it allows you to use the backend, or in that case, Laravel's uh, router to handle all of your routing and it just passes information to view. And it has a front-end library that decrypts that information and it renders the page just like Vue would. So the complexity is increasing, um, if that makes sense. And with Laravel Livewire, you, you might be familiar with uh, Phoenix Live View, Phoenix written in Elixir. It is very similar. So uh, as we introduced all of those front-end libraries and all of that, I feel that apps became a bit too complex. So you would have an SPA making AJAX requests to your APIs, rendering data, or you would have an old-fashioned application that just used Vue on the most complex places. And that's what I used to do. That's what I usually do. I have a normal app, the ones that renders uh, HTML straight from the server. And when I needed a little bit of uh, a more complex UI or something, I would use Vue to handle that, but then I would have, you know, my regular template files, my regular controllers, then a Vue component accessing an API and saving data to another API. It worked quite well, but it wasn't just the best solution. Sometimes I needed it to really, really simple things and it was a little bit overkill, but it's what I had. 
And with Livewire and LiveView from Phoenix, you have the ability to use the same template engine, in that case Laravel's Blade, to, to build your stuff, and it uses Ajax requests, so it's asynchronous. So you have the ability to, you know, you have this a little, you, know, you have this complex form, and uh, you don't want to to use Vue, you can use Livewire, and uh, it it has almost everything you need for a basic. Uh, I, I do think it has everything you need for the basic usage. Uh, you have reactivity, you have uh, a synchronous request, so you know. It's for, for simple things, it's perfect. The user can type something and uh, you can save it straight to the server. And it uses Ajax request. Uh, basically, it keeps re rendering the component every time you change something, it sends a request and gets a response back with the current state of the component and it, you know, keeps uh, switching the, the elements. But it works just fine. It works for what I do, uh, for, you know, for the simple use cases of you, it works perfectly. And um, so, you know, that's what I'm saying. Uh, things are becoming less complex. I'm using the same template engine, something I'm familiar with. I don't have to create a view component. I don't have to create a root. I have all of that inside the component. And I'm seeing that in, in some languages. So uh, I'm going to be honest, I'm not really into, um, I'm not really familiar with other languages and, and frameworks, communities. Uh, I do follow the view community a bit. And the Ruby com community as well, but uh, I don't really, I don't really know what's up in in the other communities. But from what I see in Reddit and Hacker News and all of that, it does seem that people are, you know, going back to what we did in, in the last decade. So, people are ditching um, front end frameworks where you don't really need it because at some point people just started using it without asking questions, it was just the default. So the default was to, to have a Node API and a React frontend. And I'm seeing that people are reverting. So they're going back to a Rails backend that also uh, spits out HTML or a Node backend that spits out HTML. And I think this is curious because, you know, at some point we were very obsessed with technology. Uh, we had Vue, we have React. I, I'm going to use this front-end framework, this back-end framework, this CSS library, and all of that. And what I'm seeing now is that we are getting very simple uh, um, libraries and frameworks, uh, uh, you know, way less complex than what we had in the past. So Vue is too great. Uh, you can view gigantic single-page applications using Vue or React or any of them. But uh, my point is, in many cases, you don't need it. And people were using it just because, yes, because that's what they were told or because that's what the job required and people weren't really asking questions. So sometimes I would stumble, some people uh, would send me, you know, uh, can you take a look at this project or something that they were doing to, to get some portfolio up. And dude, I was like, and I was like, yeah, what is this? You no, know, they had several libraries installed. Um, so they had, you know, a little to do app. They had Laravel and they had socket IO to handle web sockets and they also had Vue. And I mean, it was just really, really complex for it to do app. You could, you know, get away with jQuery or just a really simple view component or refresh in the page, whatever. So I feel what, what I feel is that the trend now, the, the trend for the next, you know, the next year or so is to reduce complexity in most cases. And what I mean with this is I think people are becoming a little bit more coherent. I'm not sure, but uh, people are starting to notice that they don't need a lot of, you know, a lot of tools and a lot of tech to handle most use cases. Um, for most cases, regular refreshable web pages are fine. And uh, sure, some applications require uh, a very complex UI where Vue or React or any other framework would be good. Some applications require very complex rules, very complex JS or CSS rules where custom Webpack configuration is needed. But in most cases, they do not. In most cases, you can get away with a simple uh, Node setup or Rails setup or Laravel setup or Python setup, whatever, without the need to have several tools. And I think this is even more important when you are working as a small team or as a solo developer, because sure, if you have 
different sectors in the company, different teams, it's easier to manage those dependencies. But if you're alone and you need to handle view and DevOps and Webpack and the backend and you know the new, this new technology that came that just you know just got announced, it becomes harder. And it's the type of you know work we don't notice because we're so used to it. But um, you know, try it if you work with a lot of technologies. Just try you know for for one day or so. Try building something the old-fashioned way. Sometimes it's much easier, it's much faster, um, and it's much it's it's much easier to maintain. Of course, this is not true for all cases, but I do think it's for most cases for most applications. Most applications do not need complex state management. Most applications do not need complex webpack rules. Most applications do not need a complex front end. Most applications would do just fine with the old-fashioned way of doing things, and. Uh, I'm not saying that React or Vue or Webpack or Tailwind or anything uh, are bad. They are. Uh, I love Tailwind. I love Vue. I really, really enjoy Vue. Uh, I really enjoy React Native. I've been playing with it for a couple of months. So they're great, but uh, I don't think they should be used all the time. And I think in most cases, they are probably not needed. That's the thing. In most cases, I think they're probably not needed. And. Uh, so yeah, I think that for the next, you know, couple of months or couple of years, we are going to see this complexity decrease a bit. We are going to see people go back to more old-fashioned ways of doing things. And at the same time, I think we're going to see those technologies get more and more advanced because React is still going to be used, Vue is still going to be used. All of them are still going to be used. And you can still have a old-fashioned app and the newer things in the same application. You can still have your old, you know, um, regular app with a few view components or a few React components. If I'm not mistaken, GitLab does use um, the old fashioned way of doing things and a few view components in some places. So, yeah, uh, I'm not the best at talking. Uh, you know, I keep circling around, circling back on the same subject. But I think you guys got my point. So yeah, I think the you know the state of web development is a little bit complex right now. It's a little bit overwhelming. But uh, from what I'm seeing, especially in the Laravel community, people are building tools and building things to decrease this, to make the developer's life easier. And I think this is very important. So uh, thanks if you you know reached <laughs> the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching this. Uh, I would really appreciate if you could leave a comment and I, if we could discuss a bit, I'm sure people uh, are not going to agree with me, not all of them. So yeah, I really enjoy having debates. So if you like, you can leave a comment and we can discuss a bit. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.